Pasic, Steve Stewart, Brian Cooper, uh, Antonio Spada, and uh, I have to say that uh, when I was Commodore during the main uh, championship, uh, I was very lucky to have the help of Antonio, especially to, for solving some little problem that uh, usually we have during the major championship. So I, I think, think we, we can, can start, start. Uh, Antonio, Antonio, so uh, you, you can, can go ahead with, with your presentation. Thank okay. you. Okay. okay, thank you, Pietro. Uh, uh, welcome, welcome, everybody, everybody. Uh, to this uh, evening presentation about uh, measurements. Uh, the focus of my presentation is about uh, preparing your boat to, um, to the major championship and to the different levels of uh, measurement you may uh, encounter during uh, the main uh, events of the international championships. Uh, I, uh, the, this uh, presentation uh, is about uh, um, uh, nearly 40 um 40 uh, slides so i will try to uh, explain as uh, uh, as easy as i can and as fast as i can uh, not to uh, take too much time and keep your attention at the higher level possible okay uh, the uh, my presentation is divided in uh, four parts uh, plus uh, an, uh, a very brief uh, appendix. Uh, if any question, please uh, write your question in the chat. Uh, at, at the end of every section of my presentation, I will answer, uh, answer uh, the question uh, uh, regarding uh, the part of my presentation. So if uh, if you have any questions, please uh, do. If not, I will begin uh, the slideshow. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, in, uh, in the northern hemisphere, uh, the, uh, the racing season is uh, already begun in some countries, but is still uh, stopped in, in other countries. For example, in Italy, we, have, we haven't yet begun our racing season because of the COVID, and uh, I suppose that the first regattas, regatta will be in May. But in other countries, uh, in the northern hemisphere, regattas has already begun, and in, in the southern hemisphere, okay, we are in the middle of the season, of the racing season, so uh, we have different situation, but uh, the main problem is always the same, to have your boat uh, compliant with the class rules. I know that uh, measurements is one of the uh, most challenging uh, uh, situation during the uh, main championship, the international championship. So the focus of this presentation is to uh, let you know step by step how, how to prepare your boat to be compliant with the class rules. Uh, the new class rules introduced in, two, uh, in 2018 uh, has been a big change uh, uh, in relation with the previous uh, general restriction in use in the class uh, for, uh, for many, many years. But nothing changed in the rules themselves. So uh, the first the first step to enter any sniper regatta is to be member of the class. 
uh, you can join the class uh, directly uh, from the uh, uh, the website or uh, from your national secretary, depending on the country you live in. Uh, some countries uh, requires the members to join through the national secretary, and uh, uh, this is a mandatory step to uh, enter a new sniper regatta. You cannot say a sniper regatta if you are not a member of the class and you pay the dues for your boat. Uh, if you, when you pay the due, uh, the Skyra uh, gives you a, a sticker you must display on the starboard say, side of the boat. And this is the proof that you, your boat is uh, uh, regularly uh, associated with the class. But the first thing is to be a member of the class and pay the dues for your boat. The second step to sail a sniper regatta is to have a va valid measurement certificate uh, to present to the regatta organizers. The measurement certificate is issued by your national secretary after a uh, uh, measurement made by your uh, national or your fleet uh, measurer. So, uh, the measurement certificate is the uh, proof that your boat has been measured and is a snipe. If you don't have any measurement certificate for your boat, you must ask the certificate to your national secretary. Uh, if not, you have to ask a measurer to uh, check the boat uh, before sailing uh, a sniper regatta. I believe that the first two steps are quite clear to everybody. Okay, this is the first change uh, introduced in, in 2021. Uh, the class has fixed a minimum age to enter uh, the sniper regattas and the age is 10 years. So no chance to young children to enter a regatta. You are a junior up to 21 years and you became a master when you are 40 years old. As you know, we have four master categories, uh, 45, 54, 55, 64, 65, 74, and 74 up uh, master legend uh, division. So uh, remember that 10 years is the minimum age to enter a sniper regatta. But also remember that uh, if a country in which you sail a regatta has a different minimum age required to sail and in the notice of race uh, the national prescri prescription are uh, uh, included uh, this is the rule to follow i say i sail a regatta in, uh, in my country in italy the minimum age to sail uh, uh, in snipe is 10 years if you go abroad to another country where the minimum age is 14 years and uh, the prescription is uh, uh, in the notice of race uh, the minimum age to say that regatta is 14 years okay and this is the uh, the first change introduced this year because uh, uh, before there was not a minimum age to enter a sniper regatta. Okay. And now we jump into the boat to see what uh, is required in the boat. The first is safety. Uh, every sniper must uh, carry two uh, buoyancy aid 
approved under uh, specific regulations which are uh, specificated in uh, the class rules. Uh, the snipe must also carry a pedal. There's no limit. You can have any kind of pedal, a small one, a large one, a wooden one, a plastic one, doesn't matter. Uh, it is only required to have a pedal or, or. And last but not least, a single piece, 15 meters long, eight millimeters di diameter of a floating tow line. A single piece, you cannot join two different shorter lines and a floating uh, towing line. The towing line cannot be stored in a watertight tank. So the towing line must be uh, ready to be used if necessary. And this is a very important safety requirement. And this is uh, the first check in any uh, international regatta. OK, second, sales. You can, uh, you can measure two suites of sales uh, in, uh, uh, in a regatta, but both sales, both suites of sales must, be must have been measured and stamped by uh, uh, recognized measure either uh, the uh, of the snipe class or the sailing federation but uh, the sail must be measured and shall display the skyra royalty when a sail is sold uh, by the sail maker the sail must uh, have the skyra royalty if not, the measurer cannot measure the same. Uh, I will answer the question at the end of this uh, first level of measurement. Okay? And so, three requirements for sales. Second requirement, and this is a very uh, important requirements, and I suppose that Blue can write a book on this matter because he knows this rule perfectly. Okay, the sale must display the nationality and the sale number. The nationality must be the one where the boat is registered. If you are the owner of the boat and you pay your dues for the boat, the nationality shall be the nationality in which your boat is registered. Uh, letters and numbers must be of the same color. We cannot see on have on use sales uh, with the nationality in red and the numbers in blue. Nationality and colors and sorry and numbers must be of the same color. The uh, snipe silhouette, the class, uh, uh, the class uh, uh, symbol can be of a different color. You can have the snipe in red and the numbers in blue, no problem. But numbers and letters must be of the same color. Digital or universal numbers are not allowed. Numbers must be of, a, of a, an Arabic style and must be, we, we use the, the uh, rounded style of numbers, not digital, not universal numbers. Only uh, Helvetica or uh, similar uh, typeface of uh, uh, character. But you can use a number that is not the same number of the boat you are sailing. 
But if uh, you use a different number, you must submit a request to the race committee and uh, the number displayed on the sale shall be a number of the registered boat at the Skyra office, not a fantasy number, not uh, a number uh, uh, obtained uh, detaching uh, one of the number or uh, previously on the sale. The number on the sale must be must be the number of a registered boat. Not uh, I don't. This is an Italian boat, not Ita One, Ita Seventy Five, or Ita uh, One Zero One. The number displayed on the sale must be of a registered boat, a boat who paid the dues to the class. This is the rule. Okay. Remember that any change on the on the sale, uh, if the number is different from the boat number, must be requested to the race committee. Okay, rather. This is a new rule introduced this year, and uh, uh, in international events uh, will be checked the security system to prevent uh, the rudder from detaching when the boat is capsized. Uh, why? Uh, because it, is, it has been reported that uh, it is quite common that sailors don't have any security system, and if they capsize, the rudder detach from the boat. And this is very, very dangerous. Uh, to prevent this, uh, this year, the Board of Governors introduced uh, the mandatory measurement and check of the security system of the rudder security system. You can use any security system, no problem. You can use this, this small uh, metal lever, a plastic uh, stopper, you can use a, a shock cord, you can use a rope, you can use everything. There's no limit, but there must be a security system. Okay, this is the first step any international regatta, and uh, I mean for international regatta, a regatta having a deed of gift uh, in, on file at the Skyra office and published on the uh, skyra.org website. This is a recognized international regatta. And at international regatta, the above rules are checked. Oh, it's very easy, very simple, very fast, but they, as, as you can understand, it's only a check of membership, sales uh, uh, compliant, and safety, nothing else. But this is the first step uh, measured at the uh, international regattas. Okay, I will try to answer the three questions I... Uh, I see on the chat, the minimum age is also for queues. Uh, the, the, the crew members, uh, handsman or crew must be at minimum 10 years old. This is the minimum in every sniper regatta. Pietro asks if, uh, if you sail a charter boat with your sales, of course, you can use your personal sale number the number of your boat. If you charter a boat, you can use your sale number. This has always been in our uh, class rules. This is not changing. If you go abroad and sail uh, an international championship where you borrow a boat, you can take your sales and use your sale number. No problem. Brett Davis. Okay, national uh, national championships. National championship as a 
uh, have an higher level of measurement and it will be the next step. Okay, I understand Pietro. Well, if uh, no more questions, I'll go forward with the second step. Now we are at uh, level zero, but remember that to enter any national or international championship, the boat must have a MDS on file at the Skyra office. This rule has been introduced, uh, oh, I believe 20 years ago. I know, I'm not sure, but many, many, many years ago. In a national championship or international championship, uh, to enter any national or international championship, regatta, your boat must have an MDS. MDS is the measurement data sheet, uh, which is issued by the uh, measurer who check your boat before the delivery. Probably older boats uh, built before um, the year 2000, uh, many, many older boats, not all, many older boats don't have uh, an MDS. And uh, to enter a championship, an MDS must be um, filled by a measurer. Okay, second step, correct or wait. You know that uh, the maximum amount of correct or weights on the snipe is 15 kilos. Correct or weights, weights must be fixed uh, everywhere in the boat, ma, but they must be visible. They can be placed inside the watertight tanks, but from the inspection port, they must be visible. They can be placed under the carter, which covers the dagger board and uh, the double bottom of the boat, of the main boat, and uh, it can be placed there, but it must be visible. Uh, if uh, in an obscured position, it must be moved or uh, maybe holes must be drilled in the carter to show the correct ways to the measurer. The position of the correct weight must comply with the moment of inertia. Uh, we will talk later about the moment of inertia, which is a very, very big uh, issue. And uh, uh, rises a lot of discussion inside the class. Okay, the position is established by the measurer when the boat is checked before delivering, and uh, that position must be marked on the measurement certificate, and on a label you can see in the black uh, round, in, in the black circle, and show it inside the boat. That, uh, that label has a, a drawing of the boat uh, on which uh, you, the measurer must uh, mark the position of the corrector weights. The same is on the measurement certificate. This is a duplicate of the sketch on the measurement certificate. Please check the position of your uh, corrector's weight and uh, be sure that they are visible for a measurer's inspection. Okay, dagger board. Uh, these are two rules introduced uh, only a few years ago. Uh, but are very important rules to be followed. 
So first, the, re re the retaining system must be a tablet, a piloting tablet. Well, I believe that 90% of the current production of the current boat sailing uh, use the piloting tablet or a hook. Uh, the old style hook on which you hang your uh, dagger board when it is lifted. Okay, only these two systems are allowed. No shock cord, no lines, uh, no uh, cleats, nothing. Only the tablet and or the hook. I know that Pietro loves the hook. I love the tablet, but we both comply with the rules. Okay, the next is the retaining line. Uh, this has also be, uh, been a great discussion uh, in the class for years uh, because uh, there is uh, many people uh, rising the board more than what is uh, allowed. Uh, to fix this problem, the class decided to establish a maximum length of the uh, retaining line. It is a security line to prevent uh, the dagger board uh, to go out the boat if the boat capsizes. The maximum length shall be 610 millimeters from the top of the dagger board case uh, to the inside of the pin of the shackle or the carabiner fixing the, uh, the safety line to the dagger board. The carabiner or the uh, shackle shall be metal and shall directly fix it to the, to the dagger board. No lines, uh, no nothing. Uh, the carabiner or the shackle shall be directly fixed in the dagger board. So you must uh, drill a hole in the dagger board in which you will uh, secure your shackle. Okay. Second step. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is not a uh, um, strict rule about it. You can use uh, uh, something like a silicone or screw or a bolt and nut or everything, but they must be fixed. If a measurer holds the, uh, no, takes the, the, the corrector ways and can move the corrector ways, which is not fixed, uh, that's not correct. It must be fixed, um, but there is not an um, uh, established system to fix the corrector way. OK? Well, second step of the dagger board. The dagger board must have a stripe, 30, uh, 350 millimeters long and 25 millimeters wide. This stripe uh, must be positioned uh, at the deck level when the, the top of this, the top of this uh, uh, stripe must be positioned at deck level when the board is stretched out, is lifted at the maximum height allowed by the class, which is 305 millimeters below the bottom of the boat. Okay, 
the safety line is a little bit longer so you can lift the boat about five centimeters higher than the maximum but but when you are sailing the stripe must be even with the deck the top of the stripe must be even with the deck if higher than the deck you are out of the rules and you can be protested okay this is also a safety rule because if you capsize and uh, your uh, your dagger board can uh, can stretch out uh, less than 30 uh, 305 millimeters it will be difficult for you to brighten the boat up okay so let's go oh another big issue mass step uh 20 years ago the mast uh, step position uh who which was restricted by the rules became free so you can put your mast step uh, wherever you want there's no limit you can also use uh, an adju adjustable mast step uh, which uh, is in commerce uh, from uh, five, six years, about. But only one transverse pin is allowed. You cannot use a transverse pin forward and a transverse pin back uh, after of the aft of the mass step. Only one transverse pin. And if you use a sliding mass step, this the slider must be fixed with a screw or with bolt and nut. So you cannot move it during racing because this is not allowed. You can move the mass step between races, there's no problem, but you cannot move the mass step during a race to prevent the situation the slider if you use a sliding mast step the slider must be fixed with a screw on bolt and nut okay so we have reached level one of the measurements at big events this level is the minimum required in south american north american and national championships so level zero and level one are the minimum measurements required at these three championships there's only one exception in national championships only in national championship the national secretary for local reasons only can allow a lower level of measurements. It's in the uh, national secretary decision, okay? But only in national championship. In North and South American championships, it's mandatory to perform all the measurements we have listed until now. Okay, let's go forward. Next is the boat weight. The boat weight is not measured measured at any at every championship, but only at an higher level of championships or championship. At a lower level of championship, only the corrector's weights, weights and their position is checked by the measurer. At an higher level of championship, also the weight of the boat is measured. The minimum weight of the boat, as everybody knows, is 172.8 kilos. And this includes the mast with standing and uh, standing rigging and fittings. This means uh, shrouds, halyards, uh, stays, and uh, all the fittings needed. 
uh, on the mast. The boom, the whisker pole, rudder, tiller, extension, dagger board, main and jib sheets. This is because the wording used in the, uh, in the rule, uh, according to word sailing, means that both uh, sheets are weighted uh, with the boat. So uh, main and jib sheets uh, are included in the boat weight. Compass, the compass is included in the boat weight and uh, all rigging and fittings, of course, block, blocks, uh, control lines, uh, hiking straps, everything is included in the boat weight. The weight doesn't include tow line, pedal, buoyancy aids, and sails, of course. But I believe that everybody knows this. Okay. Sales, okay, there is one more step. Uh, but this is only an explanation, not a different requirement. Uh, the sales requirements are the same as in uh, the lower level of measurements. But just to explain, in, in 2011, uh, the Skyra adopted a different uh, measurement, uh, measure, measurement uh, system for sales from the grommet system to the edge system. Before 2011, sails were measured from the center of the three grommets, uh, the tack, the, uh, the sheet, uh, and the top grommet. Uh, in uh, 2011, uh, the measurement uh, switched to the edge measurement. So the sails are now measured from the angles and uh, uh, this has been a great, great, great improvement uh, because uh, all sales, uh, all uh, uh, the software used to cut the sales uh, works on the edges and uh, the edge measurement is also the preferred system uh, recommended by world sailing. And after this switching, uh, I have found that uh, uh, very, very, very few sales uh, are not regular. Uh, with, the, with the switching, we obtained that uh, all the sales are regular. It is very difficult to find uh, an irregular sale. I remember that in uh, 2013, I was the chief measurer at the Worlds in Rio. And after measuring about 300 sales, uh, we found only three sales not complying with the rules, 1%. Uh, this was a, a great, great uh, improvement. Okay, but this is not in the, in the sailors, uh, uh, it's not a sailors duty, it's a, a manufacturer, sail maker duty. Okay, jib attachment. Everybody knows that uh, Antonio. The, sorry, yeah. there is a question for, uh, from YouTube. You can see on the chat regarding the dagger board. Oh yes. Oh, um, mm, sorry. I must go and pick up my uh, glasses because of the uh, protrusion of dagger board is a three hundred and five millimeters minimum when deck stripe is aligned, is aligned, isn't it? Okay, uh, the protrusion is 305 millimeters maximum. Yes, the protrusion is maximum, okay? And the, the wording used in my, uh, in my slide was a little different. Uh, and go back, the board must stretch out. And this is the wording suggested by word sailing, but the protrusion, maximum protrusion must be 305. It's the same, okay? 305, uh, 305 and five millimeters 
of daggerboard must always be out of the bottom of the boat. Okay, just to clarify, thank you, uh, Ricardo, for uh, the question because I had to explain. Uh, stretch out is a, a wording suggested by World Sailing when I wrote the class reviews. And uh, okay, this might not be clear to every to everybody. Okay, jib attachment. Uh, you all know that the maximum distance from the hull datum point, uh, the old point zero, which is now called all uh, hull datum point, uh, is uh, 279 millimeters. This is the minimum. Uh, Sorry, uh, the minimum distance. Okay, from uh, it's oh, uh, there's uh, there's a mistake. The minimum distance from the hull datum point uh, to the forward hold of the jib attachment. But uh, in uh, 2018, it was introduced a new rule, uh, an additional rule. Uh, the hole shall also be uh, 45 millimeter maximum above the shear line. This is to prevent uh, any attempt to uh, use uh, mm, uh, particular fittings uh, with a very high hole, and a very high hole automatically moves uh, the attachment forward infringing the rule, the rule stating that the minimum distance uh, uh, shall be 279 millimeters. For that reason, it has been introduced uh, this second measurement, 45 millimeters above the shear line. Uh, all the standard fittings used by the, uh, uh, the manufacturers, as I know, comply with this rule. Uh, so uh, there's, uh, there are two pictures uh, at the top uh, right of the, of, the, uh, of the screen in which you can see two different systems uh, to, to connect the, uh, the stay and to connect the G Balliard to the fitting. Both are correct. You can directly connect the jib uh, halyard, or you can use uh, a shackle, a ladder, uh, anything. Uh, but both systems are correct. Okay, daggerboard. Uh, at this higher level of championship, we are talking about. Also, Ant the, Antonio, yeah. sorry, another question. Is the jib attachment rule apply also to the force stay elastic? No, 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 no. Uh, we are only talking of the uh, jib attachment and the stay attachment. You can uh, fix, uh, you can uh, uh, connect uh, the shock cord uh, used to tighten the, the jib stay. Uh, to any point of the boat. There's no problem. Okay? Perfect. At this higher level of uh, championships, also the dimensions of the dagger board are checked. Usually measurer as a template, they place the dagger board on the template and they check the dimension of the dagger board. Uh, but usually there's no problem. The only possible problem is usually the tapering, because tapering must maximum be uh, 25 millimeters from the edges, the front edge, the back edge, and the lower edge. But uh, maximum 25 millimeters, no more. OK, let's go to the next. We have uh, reached level two. The above controls are the minimum requirements for measurers 
at the Western Hemisphere and Orient and European Championship. And on the uh, Skyra Rius conductor, this is called level two. Okay. Uh, so if you sail a Western Hemisphere, hemisphere on an European Championship, you must check your boat weight, your daggerboard dimension, and so on. One additional requirement is that to enter these two championship, the boat must have a moment of inertia test on file at the Skyra office. You cannot enter the continental championship if your boat hasn't a moment of inertia test. So when you uh, enter the regatta, uh, the Skyrofi will check if your boat has an MDS and has the MOI test. If not, you cannot enter that championship. Okay. Now we are entering the higher level of measurement at the top championships. The rudder. Uh, at the top uh, championship, the weight of the rudder of the rudder is checkered, and the minimum weight is two point seventy two kilos uh, fittings included, of course. Uh, corrector weights are allowed on the rudder, but uh, four hundred and fifty grams if the boat has been measured before January 1st, uh, 2015, and 250 grams if the boat is measured after uh, beginning January 1st, 2015. Uh, January 1st, 2015 is the separator uh, time for the rudder. We will see it in the next uh, in the next step. Okay. And this has been the main issues issue at the uh, 2019 World Championship because the rule was not so clear. But now it has been rewritten and clarified so in the new class rules, it's very clear. Both built before February 26, 2018, can use any rudder approved in the past. Okay? Approved before 2015. But boats built from February 26, 2018 must use the design approved in 2015. So new boats must use the new design, which is not different in the lower part, but is different only in the top, the part attached to the transom. Okay, so this is uh, this separa um, the uh, the uh, separation time. New boats, uh, February 26 is the day in which the new class reuse became effective. Beginning that date, all boats must use the design approved in 2015. Boats with built before can use this design or the previous design. No problem about it. Okay? The restriction is applied only on new boats, as you can understand. But now this is clear, and there will not be the problems found at the Ilabella World Championship. Okay, must uh, at the 
uh, higher international championships, the mast is checkered. The weight of the mast is checkered. The center of gravity of the mast is checkered. And uh, the fittings are checkered. So uh, the rule says that the mast must have a stopper at the top to prevent uh, uh, the main to be hoisted higher than the band. Okay, the spreaders cannot be adjusted while racing. The pole launcher block shall not extend from the forward side of the mast. Uh, the minimum weight of the mast is 9.1 kilos and corrector's weight are allowed. Why? This is a rule introduced uh, four years ago. Because if you uh, if you purchase a mast close to the minimum weight and you change your uh, metal halyards with a uh, 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 line, a dynamo or something like that. Uh, the the mast can the mast can uh, be uh, lighter than allowed. For that reason, it is allowed to uh, add uh, corrector weights up to one hundred grams, but the position of the corrector weights must uh, uh, be uh, must must. Uh, uh, let the mast comply with the center of gravity. So you cannot place the corrector's weight on the mast step so that the uh, mast don't, the doesn't balance uh, at the correct point. Okay? So the uh, balance, the center of gravity of the mast must remain the same, but you can place 100 grams of corrector weight if needed. Uh, uh, I remember that at the uh, 2015 World Championship, all the masts were weighted, and I believe uh, out of 85 masts, only one was lighter than the minimum, uh, than allowed. So usually masts are uh, at minimum or, the, or heavier than the minimum. And we have found the mast uh, up to 10 kilos, uh, which is about 10%. Okay. Uh, last stays shall be metal. Of course, the fore stay and the uh, shrouds can be metal. And the minimum diameter is 2.5 millimeters. Uh, Heliards can either be metal or textile, but PBO is not allowed. Boom and pull. Okay, uh, the boom, uh, just like the mast, must have a stopper at the band to prevent the uh, base of the main to be stretched too much. And uh, the whisker pole shall be maximum two six four uh, four two millimeters long. This is uh, the maximum uh, length of the pole. Okay. Okay. Next step is the moment of inertia. Um, uh, we can talk. We can discuss. We can make. Uh, uh, thousand of questions about the moment of inertia, but uh, in this lecture, I would only talk about the rule and not uh, uh, about the boat performance uh, in the relationship with the moment of inertia. So, the moment of inertia rule has been introduced when. Uh, the GRP boats were allowed. Why? Uh, the original design of the snipe uh, was made uh, to uh, allow 
anybody to build his own boat at home using the standard planks 16 feet long. But as you know, a plank has a, a constant thickness. If you build a GRP boat, you can place uh, the glass and the resin wherever you want. So you can uh, build a very light boats at the extremities and very stiff and heavy boats in the middle. To prevent this, the moment of, iner of inertia uh, test has been introduced to guarantee that the construction of the boats is uh, more or less the same along uh, the entire hull to prevent very light extremities and to prevent weak hulls. This is the main reason uh, for the moment of inertia to be introduced in the class. Um, it's my uh, uh, idea, but this idea is supported by uh, many other people, that there is no direct relationship between a low moment of inertia and the boat speed. I would like to stop any discussion on this issue. We can talk one more hour on this. I will only try to explain why. I believe that the low moment of inertia doesn't affect the boat speed too much. It's because the moi, the moment of inertia, it checked placing the boat uh, in equilibrium on a jig. This jig you can see in the picture about to balance perfectly on this jig, only fixed by two springs at the bow. But this point is not the center of gravity of the boat because the center of gravity of the boat is higher than the swinging point of the boat when the moment of inertia is checked. In addition, when we sail, uh, we add a rudder, a mast, a boom, a jib, a main, and a daggerboard, which have a different center of gravity and placed very far from the center of gravity of the boat and uh, not only on a horizontal plane, but also on a vertical plane. And this affects the moment of inertia of the entire system, which is sailing in the water a lot. The center of, uh, the, uh, the center of gravity of the mast is about uh, uh, two meters and a half above the water level. And uh, this affects the moment of inertia of the, uh, of the entire system a lot. You know that uh, the distance from the center of gravity of the boat uh, is, uh, uh, affects the moment of the inertia of the square of the distance. So, a rudder, uh, two kilos, 0.7 uh, heavy, uh, affects the moment of inertia a lot. And the crew sitting or hiking on the boat affects the moment of inertia of the system a lot. You can also imagine. For that reason, 
the true moment of inertia of inertia the of the system moving in the water is really really different from the moment of inertia on the bare hull of the boat that's only to explain my opinion but we can uh make another uh evening lecture only on this issue because it's quite complicated and uh, many many different ideas uh, are on this uh, subject i know that snipe sailors are crazy for a low moment You will, uh, in the lower level regattas, I mean Western Hemisphere or international championship such as South Americans or North Americans can be performed at higher level of measurement. Uh, I, I mean, uh, South American requires level one. But if the organizing committee uh, decides that in that regatta a higher level of measurement shall be performed, it can be done, but it can be clearly explained in the notice of race. If not, it must be applied the minimum required by the uh, Skyra rules of conduct. Okay? I don't see any questions, so I go forward. Okay, at home measurement. Oh, this is a very interesting uh, thing. Okay. Okay. Okay, yes. Yes, you can place the corrector's way weights wherever you want, but the center of gravity of the mast must, must be in the uh, requirements. Okay? So you can place the 100 grams allowed wherever you want, but when you weight the mast and you check the center of gravity of the mast, the center of gravity must be within uh, the reels. No, that, no, 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 the, uh, the G bluff wire, the G bluff line, can be either metal or can be a line. There's no problem. But not, P, not PBO. No, not PBO. But I will explain in a in the next uh, in the next slide. The allowed materials are explained in the next uh, in the next slide. Okay. Okay, if satisfactory, if my answers have been satisfactory, I go forward with the next slide, at home measurement. Uh, this, uh, this kind of measurement has been introduced uh, about uh, three, four years ago. Uh, if I correctly re remember at the Europeans in uh, Santiago de la Ribera, Spain, where more than 100 boats entered the regatta. You can understand that the level two uh, of measurement required for the, an European championship uh, 
uh, is quite uh, uh, long. And uh, to measure 100 boats will take uh, days, more days than the regatta days. So the organizing committee uh, asked and uh, obtained the permission to introduce the home measurements. Boats are measured at home by a national measurer guaranteed by the national secretary. We'll show the measurement sheet signed by the measurer at the organizing committee. And uh, the, uh, at the event, uh, only few things are measured. I mean, the weight, I mean, the sales, but uh, if properly measured at home, it is not necessary to measure the boat again. And uh, this is uh, a great improvement uh, to speed up all the measurement procedures before uh, the big, big championship, because uh, with 80, 90, or 100 boats uh, sailing a regatta, uh, measurement became, uh, became a very, very big problem and take a, take a long time. And this is, I don't say annoying, but it's a waste of time. If you can measure your boat, and your boat is guaranteed by your national measurer and your national secretary, we, you can uh, jump uh, all the measurements and only perform one, two, or three uh, main measurements required by the organization. Usually, usually the weight, the sales, sometimes the moment of inertia, but nothing more. Okay? This is a good system to uh, avoid a great waste of time. Okay. Always on means that the next rules, the next uh, uh, prescription, prescriptions are not checked, are not always checked in international championships, but uh, the compliance must be is mandatory in any snipe regatta, even if it's not checked by the measurers. So your boat must comply with these rules. The mass partner, the minimum distance from the whole datum point is 1494 millimeters. And usually, this is checked by the uh, manufacturer before the boat is, the boat is uh, delivered to the customer. But any, anyhow, this is a rule to uh, check and uh, which must be uh, followed by everyone. OK? Uh, why this rule? This rule was introduced when the master position, uh, the fixed master position, the limited master position uh, were cancelled to prevent uh, uh, a great movement of the master step position on the boat. Okay, this is a rule introduced in uh, 2001. Crowd adjusters, okay, this is another issue. It's becoming an issue. There's no limit in the shroud adjuster. You can use any system you want, any system on the market, available on the market. But the class rules requires that the shroud's length cannot be adjusted while racing. Okay, uh, with a pin and hole uh, adjuster, uh, every, everybody 
understand understand that it's not possible to adjust the shroud's length during a race, but with all the other systems, including the last blue wave, this is one in the uh, right bottom, it is very easy to adjust the shroud's length during a race. And I've seen many, many crews doing that while racing. You know that you can be protested and can be disqualified if you uh, adjust the shroud length during a race. But the class has no limit on the system you can use on your boat. So, Every system showed in the pictures is allowed. Electronics. Or you can use during a race only a clock, a stopwatch, and a compass, an electronic compass. Nothing else. You cannot use any system which allows you to make or to receive any communication which is not allowed to uh, other uh, sailors. So you cannot use your, your phone, you cannot use a VHF, you cannot use a GPS. All those electronics are forbidden, okay? Only a clock, a stopwatch, and a compass, nothing else. And the compass shall be a compass with, with only bearing and time, nothing else. Uh, you can find on the market many, many electronic compass with different functions. But on uh, the snipe class, only bearing and uh, uh, timer are allowed. Uh, okay, VHF or GPS can be uh, placed on the boat, can be used only if provided by the organizing committee. Uh, we have sailed the European Championship in uh, Poland uh, in 2014. Every, everybody uh, had a GPS on the boat and could track his race course after the race. But the GPS uh, was provided by the organizing committee. And in that occasion, we found that uh, during a reach, uh, a snipe can uh, sail at more than 60 knots of speed, because that speed was, uh, was uh, uh, tracked by the GPS mounted on the boat. Okay, use of carbon. This is also a big issue, but on the uh, on the last uh, uh, class reviews, it is clearly uh, stated that carbon is allowed in running rigging, fittings, compass support, pillar extension, mast pusher puller, the mast ram, it's also called mast ram, which is a running rigging. And for that reason, it is allowed the carbon in the mast pusher puller and in the splash rail, providing that the splash rail is not molded with the boat, with the deck. It is screwed. If it is screwed on the on the deck, if it is glued on the deck, it's okay, can be made of carbon. If it is molded with the deck, cannot be of carbon. So a block a cleat, a slider, 
um, can be of carbon. The tablet, the security, the, uh, the tablet for the dagger board can be made of carbon. Um, uh, some time ago, there was uh, some builder which uh, uh, made some uh, aesthetic parts in carbon, but the wording aesthetic doesn't exist in the word sailing dictionary. So word sailing said as you must say what is allowed and everything else is not allowed. So remember running rigging, fittings, compass support, tiller extension, flash rail, must push a puller. Those are uh, th those can be made of carbon, nothing else. Okay, sheets and halyards. Everything can be used in the sheets and in the halyards. Dynama, Spectra, Vectran, Kevlar, Polyester. All these are allowed. EBO, also known as xylon and carbon, are not permitted. But Okay, this is not a problem, I suppose. Okay, we are close to the end of this presentation. You can find all the information you need on the snipe.org website. You can find the constitution, the bylaws, all the rules about the class, including the class rules, including the builder certification, including the MDS sheet, uh, including uh, uh, the equipment reuse or sailing, which are basic uh, to understand uh, our class rules because our class rules are uh, written on the equipment reuse or sailing uh, published by World Sailing because we are using the same words, the same wording, we call uh, all the parts of our boat with the wording required by word sailing. You can find all the Dido gifts and uh, uh, you can find the, uh, the sales, the diagrams, uh, the sales measurement uh, procedures, you can find uh, the ident identification on sales rules. Everything is on our website. You can download all the documents. Okay, and this is uh, the last part of my presentation. Uh, there are three or four appendix. Uh, 2001 was not an odyssey for the class. It was a turning point, a really important turning point because in 2001 were standardized the position and the diameter of the rudder and transom fittings. The dagger board case height, the double bottom height and mast length, and the, the uh, limit of the mast step position was cancelled and introduced the mast partner position. Uh, these decisions uh, made all the rudders all the dagger boards, all the mast interchangeable between boats of different builders. Before 2001, every builder had a different construction. The dagger board case has a different height. The position of the uh, rudder fittings were different. There were different fittings. 
uh, there were the different mask length because every manufacturer has a, had a different double bottom position, height, I mean, and the mast had to be cut uh, at a different length because of this. After 2001, all this was cancelled and now we can change on all boats built after 2001, we can change between boats, the rudder, the daggerboard, the mast, without any problem. And this simplified the life to the snipe sailors. Okay. And this is appendix two about the rudder shape development. The rudder has also been a nightmare in our class before it is quite difficult to measure. We have a template, we have different kinds of templates, but basically the templates make the measurement easier when you go to a, an international championship. But during the last 30 years, there has been improvement in the rudder design to fix some problems which arose during uh, the years. So in the 19s has been uh, changed, uh, the, uh, uh, there was a little change in the rudder shape. Uh, at the beginning of the uh, 2000s, there were several requests for uh, a correct real interpretation, uh, especially about uh, uh, the rather uh, minimum uh, dimension in the part connected to the transom because the rule was not really clear. So there were many discussions. Uh, as a result of this discussion, a new dimension, a new design of the rudder was, uh, was made and a detailed design with uh, uh, detailed rules. And this new design, as I, I explained it before, was introduced as mandatory on all new boats built after February 26, 2018. This is an example of the new design, just uh, to show uh, the difference is only in the part between uh, the, um, uh, the fittings. That was the, the uh, shape of the rudder, which uh, was uh, not so clear. And this was fixed, clearly fixed in the new design. So this kind of rudder is mandatory for uh, all boats built beginning uh, 2018. Okay. The appendix three is about our reuse development. As you know, the first design of the snipe is uh, back to the 30s, and we have 80 years of life now. And uh, the original design was for own build of the boat. But uh, during the, the years, materials changed, construction method the, developed, new, uh, new technology were introduced in the, the boat and yeah. in, the, uh, in the fittings, uh, in the mast, in the booms, uh, in everything, in the sails, in everything related with the boat and the, and the uh, class, the, the general restriction of the class were updated continuously to follow the development of the building of the materials and so on. In the 70s, uh, 
the the general restriction were uh, revisited to introduce uh, uh, the same tolerance for the wooden and the uh, GRP boats. Then in 96, uh, uh, they were reviewed to uh, uh, obtain a more coherent structure. Uh, as you know, when you update, when the, you re, when you revisit the rules uh, during the year, you had new rules, you delete old rules, uh, you introduce new material, and so on. It happens that the uh, the rules became uh, uh, incoherent, uh, and maybe the same rule is written in a part of the of the restriction or in another part you can go and and uh, and try to find uh, all uh, what is related to uh, to a part of the boat in different parts of the of the uh, general restriction in 1996 uh, all the rules were revisited and uh, it was obtained a most a most coherent uh, um, structure. And uh, in 2018, the rules were completely rewritten following uh, the word sailing template. This is because word sailing requested to all international classes to use the same template to write the rules. This makes uh, um, the reading of the rules simpler and uh, and uh, uh, allows all world sailing international measurers to check every boat every different boat uh, without uh, difficulties because every class rule uses the same wording to explain a rule and this has been a great improvement in re uh, re rewriting uh, the rules, the rules themselves the themselves didn't change. This, uh, the rules remained the same, but changed uh, the way the rules are written. Uh, this may be for the old snipe sailors for those who are sailing snipes uh, since many 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 years this has been a little bit confusing but uh that's the way that's the way we must follow we are a big international class and uh, uh, uh world sailing world sailing is asking all the international class to follow uh, the same structure when writing their rules. And we are very close to the conclusion. This is the last slide. There's another uh, publication uh, you can find uh, on, the, on the website uh, I'm showing uh, the 2021 version, which will be uh, available on the snipe.org uh, site in very, very few days. Now you can find the 2020 version. The 2021 is improved with the new rules approved for, the, for this year, beginning this year. And this is the measurer's handbook. It, it is, okay, uh, uh, like a Bible for our uh, fleet and national and international measurer, but it is also important for all sailors because it explains all the procedures step by step to measure uh, snipe. And I believe that uh, every sailor can find uh, uh, interest 
in uh, uh, giving a look to this handbook. Uh, it is now under revision uh, by our current uh, uh, Rules Committee Chairman and our uh, current uh, Chief Measurer, just to check if there is, if there is some, uh, some mistake. But it will be available in very, very few days. The handbook is ready. Okay, so we have now finished the presentation. I hope it has been clear and it has been satisfactory and it has answered uh, to the most common questions regarding measurement, especially when you go to sail an international uh, high-level competition. Okay. Uh, if no question, Pietro, yeah. you are the boss. <laughs> nice, so. Yeah, thank you, Antonio. Thank you. The presentation was very uh, complete, I think, and interesting for, for everybody. We are all sailors, but I know, I see that there are also uh, some uh, measures that I met in many regattas around the world. Uh, I would like to say thank you to you for uh, this great presentation, but also to Blue, Ricardo Lobato, who was uh, working, was working in the control room. <laughs> for the Snipe Today, Snipe Today Live uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, I also would like to say to everybody that uh, probably uh, next Wednesday, we have another lecture from uh, uh, presented by Riccardo Lobato about uh, the some uh, uh, racing rules of sailing situation. I think uh, uh, he's preparing something about uh, mark roundings probably. So um, I let you know on the website uh, about uh, the next lecture. Thank you, everybody. If you have any question, please uh, go ahead. Or uh, in any case, I, I say again, thank you to everybody and to Antonio. OK. If anybody wants to make uh, to write any question, you can write to my email address. I usually answer in very, very few days. So if any question, any problem, any doubt, you can write and I answer. OK, perfect. Bye bye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you to all. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye Antonio, bye Pietro, bye all. Ciao Mario. Ciao ciao. Ciao Pietro, ciao Antonio.